Hello and welcome to the Monday, April 10th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Quite a few interesting uh, diaries over the weekend, so let's start with Friday. Friday, Xavier wrote about how to detect suspicious API usage with Yara rules. Yara rules, well, the open source language to detect malware, that's how I always describe it, but essentially it allows you to create patterns and efficiently search binaries for those patterns. Now, what Xavier is looking at here is particular behavior that's often associated with malware, in particular the virtual alloc function with the page execute read write attribute set, which basically means that, uh, well, anything can be done with this just assigned memory. And he presents a quick Yara rule to look for just uh, this particular behavior. Uh, give it a try and uh, let Xavier know if this is something that uh, works for you. Then we got a little surprise from Apple on Friday. Apple released an update for iPad OS, iOS and Mac OS on Friday. An update was sort of expected. That's very typical. A couple of weeks after there's sort of a larger update that we had uh, recently for these operating systems, there's often a smaller update fixing sort of some outstanding bugs. But in this case, the update also fixed two already exploited vulnerabilities. The vulnerabilities were reported by Amnesty International, so likely exploited sort of in a more targeted sense in uh, that particular uh, context. What's sort of interesting is the two vulnerabilities together. The first vulnerability is a WebKit vulnerability. We had you know, hundreds of WebKit vulnerabilities. They, like in this case, allow arbitrary remote code execution as you visit a malicious web page, but that code would typically run inside the Safari sandbox. However, the second vulnerability does allow then a privilege escalation to run code as using kernel privileges. So this would bypass any sandbox protection Safari would afford you. Yes, there's also a Safari update. That's the WebKit part, and it's likely interesting for interesting for people that run older versions of Mac OS. No word yet about older versions of iOS, but typically Apple will then, at a later point, release updates for these kind of vulnerabilities for older versions of iOS. Well, then uh, before we continue with diaries, we also uh, got on Friday another interesting vulnerability patched and that's a sandbox escape vulnerability in the vm2 javascript library sandbox escape vulnerability is usually not that big of a deal this one has a cvss score of 9.8 i've also people seen it rated as a 10 the problem is that the VM2 module is specifically designed to do something really hard, and that's to run untrusted JavaScript inside a secure sandbox. This could, for example, be used if you are running sort of, you know, functions as a service. You're basically running JavaScript code that others wrote and just uh, sort of in a serverless kind of scenario are running, uh, then uh, VM2 would be used to make sure that that JavaScript code cannot affect the underlying system. So we're not talking about JavaScript code running in a browser, but more of JavaScript code running in a Node.js-like environment. The library itself is apparently quite popular. 721 different packages are including it and it has about 4 million downloads per week so this could potentially be a huge problem not the first time that we do have issues uh, with this uh, library snick for example in december uh, last year found another uh, vulnerability a similar uh, kind of issue here Similar CVSS rating, haven't heard a lot about exploitation here, but it's one of these things you certainly have to be careful about. Another potential attack point here is uh, sort of you no know, code editors and such. Maybe a little bit more difficult to expose them to the actual exploit, but a proof of concept exploit is available. So uh, yet another reason why you probably want to prioritize this update. 
you should be running version 3.9.15 of the VM2 library in order uh, to prevent uh, this particular vulnerability. And the CVE number of this vulnerability is 2023.29.017. And then we also have some important changes uh, coming regarding Microsoft Net Logon that you should be aware of if you're using SMB for file sharing, like on you know, network uh, file systems and the like. The problem here is that Microsoft released a patch for a vulnerability that enforced RPC sealing. Uh, this patch that enforced or allowed you to enforce RPC sealing was released in November last year, but because of uh, compatibility issues, uh, it wasn't enabled by default. Starting April 11th, so this will be this week uh, with a patch Tuesday, it can't be disabled anymore in the registry. So uh, that may lead to compatibility issues. Some uh, vendors of um, network storage device already have reached out to their customers, NetApp here in particular. And thanks for William here, one of our readers to actually point us out uh, to their notice. So be aware of this. Uh, April 11th, that's when the initial enforcement phase starts. And like I said, then you can no longer disable RPC ceilings, some older devices that uh, may no longer function here. And the next update will then come in July when any authentication without ceiling will uh, just no longer work. Well, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.